Hello everyone, Farah Hanoon here and I'm joined by Josh Emmett who's coming off a phenomenal third round knockout win over Michael Johnson at UFC Philadelphia. Josh, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Congratulations on a spectacular win. We all know you've been through so much, uh, kind of your road to recovery and to have such a phenomenal win like that, I, I feel like this was like, everybody was so happy for you just to see you go through adversity and have a finish like that. Are you back in Sacramento now, by the way? Yeah, my uh, my wife and I we got back late last night. So uh, yeah, it was it was it was great. You know, it I couldn't have uh, drew it out any better than it went. Uh, besides not getting the bonus, of course. And uh, yeah, we we you know we we always try to stay wherever I'm fighting just to kind of do a lot of sightseeing, enjoy some of the food, and and check out some places since we're out there. So we. Uh, we ended up going to Washington D.C. one day, and then we stayed in Philadelphia and saw a lot of, you know, just there's so much history in Philly, and uh, we just ate our ate our way around town too. That's awesome, and I always tell you this every time I talk to you that I love that you do that, that you actually capitalize on on the fact that this fight game takes you all around the world and all around the country. The fact that you actually take the time to see uh, the city or the state or wherever you are. So I was gonna ask you, but you just told me now that you went to D.C. and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, we, we did all that. And, uh, yeah, you, you have to do it. You got to enjoy it because I, and, and I've said this before, but I feel like you just, you just miss out. Like if I, if I'm going to a different country or a city or wherever I'm going and I've never been before, you know, we're so caught up and, and, and so busy doing stuff throughout fight week and you can't really, let alone food. I, I'm, I'm a big, uh, foodie. So it's like, I can't ever enjoy the food if I were to just, uh, go home Sunday morning like a lot of fighters and coaches do so my wife and I and friends and, and, and mom we always try to you know stay at least you know like two to three days so yeah it was uh, Philly has some great food uh some some great uh just everything about it you know the architecture it's, it's so the, the the history of it and and the, uh, it's just neat you know we we had we had a lot of fun just didn't sleep much but a ton of fun and saw a lot of things Nice. Did you try Geno's, by the way? Because I keep hearing about it. Yeah, we, um, we did. We did uh, Geno's. We did Pat's. Those are like the, the popular ones. But I feel like they're a little uh, too touristy. They're, they're all right. You know, they're pretty good. Um, but we had some people that are from Pennsylvania. And, and they told us that the hole-in-the-wall spots, the, the places where people from Philly uh, go. And so we checked those out as well. So I'm, I'm definitely sick of Philly cheesesteaks. <laughs> I, I think I ate more cheesesteaks uh, in the past few days than I have in a few years. I can imagine. And I wanted to ask you, unfortunately, you didn't get the bonus, which was shocking to me. I mean, there's nothing more one can do in, in terms of a performance or a knockout like that. Did the UFC not compensate you at all in any shape or form? Yeah, nothing. So uh, at least not yet. Um, I, I, I'm staying positive. I'm, <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm hoping that that Dana comes through and, and does something because, you know, we've seen that before. He wasn't at the fight. Uh, I'm assuming he didn't see the fight because otherwise I feel like it would have been a shoe in I, I thought when I when I finished Michael Johnson that way um, and, you know, Uriah, Joey, and Danny came into the cage and I looked at him, I was like, man, finally, like I'm getting the bonus because uh, this is one thing, you know, a lot of people, and we heard it earlier on that card too, they're like, Oh, I'm just, you know, I want to fight at home. I'll fight for free. Um, people don't fight for the money. They fight to be the best. And yeah, that'll come along with it. But I fight 100% for the money. That's why I'm fighting. Um, because you can make a good amount of money uh, if you're winning and doing well. And then with that comes a legacy, comes, you know, the greatness, all these type of things. But that's why I was, uh, I, I was just... Super disappointed I did not get that because, like, I want if I want to do anything, you need money. If I want to, like, you know, help charities or help do things or just do things that I have planned for in the future, you need money. You need money to make money and you need money to, to help others. Absolutely. Did you not get a bonus for the Ricardo Lamas knockout or am I mistaken? No, I, I did not because I, I didn't make the weight. <laughs> so uh, that was, uh, oh that's why, you know, you're, yeah. you don't get any bonuses, but it, but it's, it's hard because I can, I feel like I can argue to why I should have got a bonus in several fights. Like even the, the Sacramento fight, when I fought Scott Holtzman, everyone was saying that was fight of the night. 
Dana White even called me the next day and say he was voting on me for fight of the night, but he got outvoted because they do a unanimous fight uh, or picks for performance bonuses. And, and I, I didn't get that. And then Poland, you know, I, I fought in Poland and I set two records. I still have uh, the most knockdowns in a single round, and that's with four. And, uh, you know, I beat Conor McGregor's three knockdowns in a single round. And then I got the first 10-7 round. So I feel like that deserved a bonus. And just so many times I can kind of argue for it, but it's like, and make a case. But then I, I've never got one. Then I thought for sure beating Michael Johnson the way I did. You know, it, it's it, it should have I should have got it. That's like that's all I can say. And I saw the UFC posted these uh, this thing about who had the best knockout of the month, and that was Masvidal. It was uh, Pettis and Gaethje, and all those great finishes, great knockouts. But all those guys still had to follow up to get the knockout. I hit Michael Johnson one time, and he uh, he was out before he even started falling down. And all three of those guys in that same conversation, they all got bonuses. I'm the only one that did not get it. And people are talking about so far, that's that's like one of the best knockouts they've seen for a long time since before the Lamas knockout. And they're saying it's like a, a knockout of the year candidate. And I didn't even get a bonus. It, it's truly madness. And I hope it, this doesn't turn into like the Ally Quinta situation where you're going to start trashing hotel rooms. I'm kidding. But like, it's it's pretty crazy and it must be super frustrating uh, I also wanted to ask you, like, going into the third round, uh, the judges were super flaky, and, and I don't know if you've noticed in your, with the fights before you, there were a lot of questionable uh, scorecards. Uh, I don't know if you even paid attention if you were watching the other fights, but going to the third round, what did your corner tell you uh, before you went out and got the knockout? I'm sorry, it's kind of breaking up. Um, yeah, I, I, what I think I got from you is... Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I, I felt like I won the first round. Uh, we gave him the second round. I went, you know, before I went into the third round, my coaches were just saying, hey, we need to have a big third round. Go out there and look for the finish. Um, go out there and just let your hands go. We were, we were in there. I, I gave him a lot of respect, you know, because he's, he's beat the best. He's fought some of the best. And uh, I knew he could end the fight at any moment, and he knew I could end the fight. So I was being pretty cautious, and, and we were uh, – I just stuck to the game plan. Like, I always feel like I need to be in the fight – just giving it a hundred percent doing everything I can to finish it. But my coaches are like, just use your movement. If the crowd boos, don't get all caught up in that and feel like you have to do it. I thought it was a really technical fight, yeah. but anyways, after being in there for two rounds, we, uh, I, I just kind of went out there and I was, I was like, screw it. I, I feel great. I'm, and I saw some tendencies that he was, uh, he, he was doing, you know, he, I kept working that body, throwing that cross to the body and the jab, and uh, I could see he was dropping that left hand. And one of the things he did really well in the first and second round is he was keeping his distance pretty well because he was really cautious of my power. But in the third round, he kind of relaxed a lot more. And uh, I saw that he, you know, he was getting much closer to me. And so I, I knew I was just feigning and level changing a lot. And I wasn't going for takedowns. I was just kind of fitting in or, or making him react to it. Uh, just be aware of the takedown. Uh, that's why I kept doing that. And then it was just perfect. You know, I fainted. I got outside his lead leg, and uh, it lined up that uh, that big overhand. I changed levels, and just he dropped that left hand, and I, I threw the overhand right over it and, and just landed it perfect on uh, right on his chin. And, and, and that was it. You know, that was lights out. And he was talking to you during the fight, right? What was he saying? Uh, he was just, I, I know I, that's just how he, how he is. And I, I knew that going in, I think he just tries to just kind of like get in your head or whatnot, but no one's going to get in my head. Um, uh, we're going to fight just some of the stuff he was saying, like when I almost caught him a few times, he was just putting his fingers up like inches, you know, like barely miss, you know, doing that type of stuff. And I was like, it's coming. And then, uh, and then one of the times I, you know, I, I threw a big uppercut, hard uppercut, and it just, it grazed him instead of, like, that That would have, I think, put him out. And he, he uh, I, Joey said something in the corner, like, he felt that. And then, and then he was, like, said something, like, yeah, right. And I was, like, no, I, I said, you're lucky I missed. And then uh, he started laughing. So it was kind of funny. We were just kind of, like, talking back and forth in there. But, um, yeah, nothing, nothing too much.
And did the crowd booing, because I was a little bit surprised about the crowd booing, uh, did that play a factor, whether positively or negatively, or did you just kind of, like, ignore that? Yeah, no, I, I kind of, like, for me, I always, I always, like, I want to aim to please the crowd, and so that's what my coaches were saying before going into it. They're like, just move, if, and I, they know me, so when they started booing, they were telling me, don't worry about it, just keep doing what you're doing. And uh, I just, I listened to him, you know, I wanted to just get in there and start, you know, get inside and just start winging them. But that I would have, you know, I would have got away from the game plan. So I, I, going back and watching the fight, I thought it was really technical and we were, we had a lot of respect for each other and we were just trying to see who could, uh, who could capitalize on, you know, someone over committing to something. And, and he wasn't over committing to anything either, because I think he knew if he did that, I was going to take him down. So he was just kind of touching in there. And we were just trying to, you know, get get each other to miss and then land a big shot. So I, I thought it was, uh, you know, for people that know fighting, enjoyed it. But it's like the people that are just in the stands drinking and just want to see someone get knocked out. That's that's just the usual casual fans and all the people that, you know, I really don't care about. Well, you gave them that at the end anyway. The <laughs> And you you were working with a mind coach right before uh, before this fight and through your recovery process. I want to ask you like talk to me a little bit about that. And also, when you got into the cage, when you stepped into the octagon, was there any hesitation or were you tentative at all? Just because it's been a long road to recovery and obviously everything you've been through. Just like tell me everything, uh, like the process of working with the mind coach and stepping into the octagon. That feeling of of coming back. Yeah, it's a, it, it, I've been working it with this mind coach before I was in the UFC. So it's uh, I've been working with him for three years, and uh, yeah, he's great. You know, it's uh, it, it, we do a lot of like hypnotherapy. We we do uh, a lot of visualization, and I think it goes hand in hand with my mentality because a lot of people, you know, and now I saw them putting this out there, and, and I've worked with him the whole time. But it's uh, people now people are interested in that. But you have you still have to put in the work. You still have to believe. You still have to do all these things. So yeah, I feel like it gives me an edge. But it, it, it's really it's, it's really nothing new because I feel like my mentality, a lot of things that I I do as well, um, that people other fighters do not do is before I'm gonna go fight. I I literally for during fight week and especially that day uh, before I go to the arena, I'm just like in not in my head, but I'm just, I'm just accepting everything that can happen. Like accepting that, you know, this fight for 15 minutes can, it's going to hurt. So I accept the the worst pain. I accept that I may break something. I may dislocate something, sprain something, whatever it may be. I, I welcome and I accept that pain that I'm about to go through for potentially 15 minutes, even out at, in Pennsylvania fight week. I cut weight because I do an afternoon and a night workout for three hours at a time, so six hours a day, and then Friday morning cutting weight. I cut weight and worked out for 30 hours from Tuesday to Friday morning before uh, before I weighed in. And I, I swear, I'm the only one in the workout room. We see people come in and they do little drill sessions and their shorts and everything, and I'm in plastic sweats like for three hours, afternoon and evening. And everyone's like, man, you're always in here. I'm like, yeah, because I, I, I cut a lot of weight for one. And, and I just have to, but so just, just that short amount of time, I put in 30 hours, uh, 15 minutes, I would be so much or so just pissed off. And it's happened before when I lose, I just beat myself up. And so that's why I'm just, I I'm willing to go through anything to get my hand raised because that pain and everything will pass with time, but the loss will not. So it's just, that's one thing you'll never see me cower away. Or just put my hands up on the ground and, and the ref saying, fight back, fight back. And, and people see it all the time. That's when the fighter wants out. You see fighters break and they're like, okay, this is my time uh, to, <laughs> to get out of here. Or uh, a submission sunk in and they auto automatically put their hand up and they're just waiting for it to get a little tighter. And then they tap. You have to put me out to finish me. That, that won't happen. So I feel like my mentality is a lot different than a lot of fighters, not saying all, but just certain things. So the mind coach goes hand in hand with this. And, and it's also one of the big things for me sitting out for 13 months, um, maybe a little hesitation and stuff like that. I felt like ring rust. I don't really believe too much in it. Uh, I felt like 
it took me just a, a little bit longer to get going, but that's also because he was such a dangerous opponent and I didn't want to go in there recklessly and get caught with something. And I just need to start fighting smarter. I can do everything. Uh, but a lot of times I'm just going in there and trying to get into a, like a, a dog fight and a, just a brawl. And that's just not safe as far as, uh, you know, it's like 50, 50, you're both on your feet, just throwing heavy punches. Someone's going to lose. Um, so I'm just trying to be a little smart about it. And, and, and that's kind of how everything's going. And, and you looked comfortable in there. I mean, there was, uh, I didn't see any tentativeness uh, other than obviously respecting his power as part of the game plan, but I'm talking about the, the 13 month layoff. Uh, you looked comfortable in there. And would you say like the fight went the way you expected it to? I know that the early knockout is, is great, but did you expect kind of the, did anything surprise you with what Michael Johnson uh, offered in the fight or his approach to the fight? No, not at all. I, I knew what he was going to do. Um, and, and it's different. I, I've touched on this before. I give a lot of people respect because I watch all their fights. I don't know um, how strong, how fast, how hard they hit until I get in there. You know, I've had some teammates fight him. I've seen a lot of his fights. And, and you know, people tell you things and maybe that gives you a little insight. But if, as far as it goes for me, it doesn't really until I experience it. Because we all have different fighting styles, different bodies. Uh, things like that the only thing I and this always happens to me but I I got in there and and just like my coaches say I always give my opponent too much respect um I I didn't think he was, he's fast but I didn't think he's that fast I, I thought he'd be a lot faster and and the power you know he has some pop on him but it's like I've been hit a lot harder before and, and I think even just I spar with some boxing pros and stuff like that and it's like boxers have a different um different power <laughs> you know what i mean so it's it was nothing I, I i haven't seen before i know four ounce gloves uh anything can happen but yeah that's that's the thing that i would say uh was a little different he wasn't as fast or as powerful as i thought he was going to be and a lot was made of that picture you put up of, of your body transformation, the 38-pound weight cut. Is that normally, because you've been through this cut a couple of times now, is that normally how much you cut, or was it because of the, the, the layoff that you had to cut down from that weight? Yeah, it was, it was a long layoff. I was yeah. a little heavier than normal, 13 yeah. months, but uh, that that's also the thing. I, I do cut a lot of weight, and, and <laughs> after my, uh, my surgery, um, I was heavy, you know, I was, I was waking up at some points at like 195, 196. But when I'm, when I'm eating good and I'm not really in the gym and stuff, like I have no issue with putting on weight, but when I'm in the gym and I'm working out and I'm eating healthy, I'd say my, my walk around weight is mid seventies, the high seventies. And what, what's the plan for you now? Like physically, how do you feel? Uh, are you ready to get back in there soon? Do you want to take a bit of time off? Where are you at? Yeah, no, I, I actually, I, I feel great. And, and this is one of the things that while I was sitting out for 13 months, the thing that kind of kept me going, I was working with my doctor and nutritionist on this, this powerful supplement um, called Mastermind. And it, it's something I've always wanted to do a supplement line. Uh, with like proteins and amino acids, but everything's so saturated and I can't compete with that. So as I was injured, there's not a lot of things to take for like, uh, you know, concussion symptoms and all these things. So my doctor had me taking multiple supplements and he's like, we changed our direction and focus. Like let's make our own supplement um, for me, of course. And then in in the end, it'll help everybody else out. So it's uh that's what we did and we, and we just released it and and i i was taking it for like three four months before and i swear not being biased because i'm partnered up with him but it's like i give that a lot of credit to why i got back to training and why um i fought you know and i, and I feel great because it's like a, a four in one compound it has like a brain booster that helps protect the cells in your brain it restores focus um restores memory and this anti-inflammatory portion that helps not only anti-inflammatory of the brain, but the entire body and the joints with all like the curcumin and ingredients in there. We have an energy enhancement agent that uh, sustained energy throughout the day. It doesn't have any stimulants, so you don't have these crashes. And then we have a recovery portion that just helps aid in, 
in recovery from all the the mental and physical stress people put on their body. And it's not just for athletes, it's for all demographics, for working professionals. Um, it, man, it's, it, it's, it really is a, a powerful one of a kind supplement. Awesome. And ideally, when would you like to get back in there? Um, as soon as possible. I want to fight in June or July. I would like to fight in July, um, International Fight Week. I've never fought in Vegas. Do you have anyone in mind? I mean, you're now ranked number eight, so not many people ahead of you, but do you have anybody in particular that you're thinking of fighting? Uh, anyone in front of me or any big name? Like I always say, you know, I, I want to fight up, and I'm unless something happens, someone got injured and they needed a, a replacement real quick, I'll take it. But I plan on being back in the gym on uh, Monday, and uh, yeah, I, I, I feel great, the best I felt. So is the is the goal now to kind of like keep the weight uh, relatively low and not try to like balloon up too much, stay ready, and anytime they can give you a fight, uh, summertime you'll be ready to go. Yeah, exactly. And I'll, I'll keep my weight under control. You know, I've, I've done a lot of things with, uh, you know, not only my nutritionist, but you know, working with Trifecta and uh, RP Strength. It's uh, yeah, it's been uh, it's been great. You know, they they help you know, get me down to weight and everything is time. And I see people saying how unhealthy and all this stuff is, but this is the best I've ever felt. It's the best fight week I ever had. I, uh, you know, trifecta partnered up with the UFC as well. So they had a chef out there, uh, and they were giving us people that, that all the ESPN cards and the pay-per-view cards, they have a chef and they're doing all your meals, hydration, supplementation. I was eating like five times a day. I was drinking, um, I, I just the last part of my cut is when I, I started on Wednesday night till Friday morning. So for like 36 hours, I, I didn't feel the best, you know, but other than that, I felt I felt great. It didn't even feel like I was fighting just because I felt so good. It was weird. Well, Josh, I really appreciate your time. Welcome back. Uh, most emphatic uh, comeback you could have pictured, probably. Uh, really happy to see you uh, perform the way you did and get that knockout. Unfortunately, no bonus. I really hope, keep me posted if, if the UFC take care of you. I don't know if you guys aren't supposed to talk about this, but I really hope they do because that was a phenomenal knockout and a phenomenal performance. Uh, glad to see you back and fully recovered and uh, top 10 in the world. This must be a great weekend for you. Uh, hopefully, we see you in the octagon soon. Awesome. Thanks, Rob. I appreciate it. And yeah, if uh, I'm staying, I'm hopeful that Dana comes through and, and, and does, does the right thing. So uh, I got to stay optimistic, but yeah, I'll, I'll let you know.